Hi, I'm Dr. David Smotridge. I'm the Founder and Medical Director of La Jolla IVF. Let's talk about pre-implantation genetic screening or pre-GD, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. We've been very fortunate to be providing patients with pre-implantation genetic screening for the past 15 years. In pre-implantation genetic screening, we have the ability to remove a cell or two from each embryo that a patient has. And with this technology, we have the ability to get information about the embryo prior to exposing the embryo into a woman's uterus. Which patients would benefit from pre-implantation genetic screening? Well, if you're a patient who has undergone multiple IVFs and for whatever reason have not been successful, and we see many patients like this, and they've been told, your embryos under the microscope look beautiful, we don't understand why they're not implanting. We do a pre-implantation genetic screening where we look at the genetic makeup of each embryo. This has completely revolutionized our practice and enables us to put healthy embryos into the woman, whether it's the intended mom herself or into a gestational surrogate. Each embryo that is genetically normal has a higher likelihood of implantation and a lower chance of having a miscarriage. Pre-implantation genetic screening allows us to look at a full karyotype. Men and women share 22 pairs of chromosomes, numbered 1 through 22, and the sex chromosomes, XX for women and XY for men. For example, if a couple is interested in having a male child, we're able to do pre-implantation genetic screening and prior to putting embryos again into the intended mom or into the surrogate, we know if it's going to be a male embryo or a female embryo prior to placing the embryo. If a couple wants girls, again, we have the ability to do that diagnosis with pre-implantation genetic screening. Sex selection within the format of pre-implantation genetic screening. I have many couples that are interested in a specific sex. And so prior to exposing the sperm to the egg in the initiation of the IVF process, we have the ability to do a special spinning of the sperm to try and enhance the number of male sperm or the number of female sperm that can be exposed to the egg. And this is very important. Now, a couple of specific examples. I have a patient in my population who has five daughters and they came to see me to try and have a child that was male. It is actually the sperm that determines whether or not a child is going to be a male or a female. Gentlemen can give all 22 pairs of chromosomes that they share with women, an X chromosome or a Y chromosome. So the X chromosome itself is physically larger and therefore physically heavier. And so when we do the special spin separation, the X sperm is heavier and the Y sperm is lighter. And so if we're shooting for boys, we can try and get sperm that is just male. Now with just the separation of the sperm or the spinning of the sperm, you only have about a 65-35 enhanced chance of the sex that you want. Now in this couple where they have five children at home that are all girls, it is clear that the gentleman has a much higher propensity of making female sperm rather than male sperm. And so sometimes in those situations, we would do more than one stimulation on the egg giver to maximize the number of eggs to expose to the gentleman's sperm and therefore enhance the number of potential embryos that are the sex that the couple themselves want. But this is the way that we do sex selection using pre-implantation genetic screening.